Well, hello creators and welcome back to the design studio where once again, I did a little bit of research and I think I found a wreath that, or a, we should call it a door hanger, could be a swag, but we're going to dabble into Christmas a little bit today. No sign. I think you'll like this because um, it's using a wide variety of different components to create a one of a kind look. So before we go ahead and get started, like I said, if you like this design and you want to save this tutorial, just click the share button. It saves it right to your Facebook page. Um, second is if you guys can do me a favor, like and follow my page. The follow button is hidden. It's just the three dots right next to the like page button. You can um, click on those. It opens up a separate sub menu and then you can go ahead and follow the page. That way, if you happen to be on your device, um, you'll get a notification that says that, you know, hey, we just went live and this is what we're doing. Also, um, just to give you a little heads up, because you guys might not know this, and I think we as video content creators just automatically assume certain things. So some people will be like, well, why don't they have all this stuff together? Why do they talk so much at the very beginning? Well, a couple things. One, when you go ahead and click that live button, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going live. So you've got to wait for the delay and there's about a 15 to 30 second delay before we actually see that we're going live. And a lot of times um, there's a glitch that happens. Maybe there's some sort of update that has to be done. And so a lot of times we're just trying to get everything functioning so that we can read comments. You can see the um, projects being completed. Um, I'm trying to think there was another thing that I wanted um, to bring to your attention, like why we do so much talking. Oh, like why we can't type certain things into the comments right away before you go live. Well, there's no capability of doing that. So you actually have to wait to go live just like I'm doing right now. And then once you're live, you can go ahead and comment on your own post. And that's how a lot of us um, pin comments. We need to make sure those comments are being seen so that we can go ahead and um, add our comments or add places where we think you're going to want to venture or even where to get additional information. So give me just a second. I'm going to go ahead and type that in really quick and we always have to wait for the delay for the comment to um to post and then we can go ahead and pin it so um i have pinned the website um below because there's an awful lot of content that you can get there for free we are constantly refreshing the page and we're trying to keep in it uh trying to keep it seasonally based so right now it's going to be a lot of halloween fall and christmas projects um, that maybe you missed that I did like maybe the first or second year that I started um, doing this. So there's going to be a lot of content for you to find. Also, how to clean a grapevine, that is in that um, free content that you can pick up, as well as the bow recipe that we'll be using today. YouTubers, a little bit different for you because um, you're catching this as a replay, but I do value your time and uh what you take when you watch these videos on YouTube. Uh, Facebook followers, you might not know that I have a, a YouTube page, which is where all the private uh, videos are housed if you can't find them on Facebook. And that's under Cal's Creations Reese. Um, so YouTubers, just make sure you hit the subscribe button or the bell in the upper right hand corner, and then you'll be notified whenever we um, upload new content. And like I said, I'm trying to get the capacity to do both at the same time. Um, but with internet here sometimes being sketchy and thankfully we have no storms going on today or high winds, we should be good to go. So you guys ready to see what we're going to make? I'm going to go ahead and pivot you down so you can get that overhead look and then we'll go over all of our materials. Give me just one second. You're going to take a trip down. We're going down south, right? Let me make sure everything. I like to always make sure that you can see. Um... The measurements down here at the bottom, um, because a lot of times I, I, I don't work up here. I work down here at the bottom. So let's say hi. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Valerie. Hi, Heidi. Good morning from Nevada. Hi, Raquel. Welcome. And Veronica 
How's everyone doing? Well, so far we're doing okay. So we have a break in the rain. We've had rain nonstop for six days now, but you'll never hear me complain about it. I absolutely love it. Hi, Denise from North Carolina. Okay, so let me show you what we're going to make. Um, so we're going to work on a nutcracker Christmas swag, I guess is what you'd call it, or a door hanger or home decor. Or some people put these in place of the race on the front door. So this is a 15 inch nutcracker. And I had somebody message me the other day and say, and um, ask, can you please do um, a tutorial involving the 15 inch nutcrackers? So you can find these. Um, I'm not sure that they're out just yet, but uh, Home Depot and Lowe's will carry these. Who else? Um, all your local craft places like Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby. So if you're looking for, hey, this is super cute. I want to put together a wreath. This is going to be the start of our entire design. So like I said, I got him last year at um, Home Depot. I don't, rem I don't remember how much they cost because I, even the other ones that I have, I don't have the tags on them. So I can't give you much information. I want to say somewhere right around $15 to $17 is roughly where they kind of fall into play. And yes, this is an actual working nutcracker. So he's going to um, go in with our traditional colors. So um, we're doing this a little bit different because when I did the first one, I actually did it on a teardrop swag. Well, I don't have any more teardrop swags. What I do have, however, is evergreen garland from like Hobby Lobby. So we are going to use evergreen garland and we're going to double it up um, because the nutcracker is going to go in the center. We need something that's going to support that weight. So I was contemplating doing something different, like maybe with the Dollar Tree candy cane frames, but I was like, oh, he sits in the middle. He needs some support. So what we're going to do is I'm going to measure this and I take it all the way down to where the evergreen pieces start. So right here, I'm going to just stretch this out to 24 inches and I'm gonna place my hand here and I'm simply going to double my evergreen swag so that they end at the same spot. And then I'll pull some of the pieces away to make sure I'm not like right here. I have a clean cut now. Uh, let me go ahead and grab my cutters. And we're going to cut this in half so that we can thicken this up. I think it would have worked anyway if we just did a singular piece, but I want it to feel like there's something more there. So, two basically, what it's going to be is one six foot piece. Um, placed or folded in half. So once we have this in place, I want to secure the ends together because we're going to just, there's like a little, I don't know if you guys can see that, a little hook, a little loop right there. I'm just going to take and insert one of my evergreen pieces from the other end inside. And we're just going to twist these two together. Okay. And then I want to fluff everything out. So I'm going to start down here at the bottom. And this is Garland from Hobby Lobby, which is my favorite over like Joann's or Michael's because it is better quality. You get more branches. So we just want to fluff it all out so we know where everything is because you can leave it as an evergreen base, but I'm going to use this evergreen form um, to house my deco mesh for me. So this is the way that you can create a centerpiece as well. So just like so. We want to make sure we have all those pieces out and fluffed up. So I've done that end. Let's go up here. Some of them, the way that they get shipped, everything is just a mess. So we want to make sure that when we join these two together, that um, we have a really secure foundation. 
So I'm just flipping everything around. There's this one. I'm trying to put hands on every single piece because a lot of them are flipped around up and under. Okay, we'll do this top little piece right here. Make sure we have everything left. I think we're just about there. This looks a little bare right here, but that's okay. When we join them together, we're going to have a lot. So you can twist if you'd like, or you could just simply take your um, pieces of your evergreen, bring them together, give it a twist. Uh, that's all I'm doing. I'm going to make it super simple. So you want to make sure, however, that you are securing one piece to the other and not just fluffing, you know, the outside. So here's my gap. I'm going to grab this piece along with this piece. I'm going to pull those two together, twist them, and we'll do the same thing closer down here. Pull those together. Nice little twist. And I bet you guys probably did not know that that is a shortcut that you can make when placing those together. So now we have just a very full 24 inch piece, which is going to be just perfect for our nutcracker, but we want to thicken this up even more. So we're going to add deco mesh to it, which is why I needed to fluff all these pieces. So we have places for that deco mesh to go. So I'm just going to straighten this out so that we're dealing with a straight piece, but there you go there. I'm sure we're going to have tons of this evergreen garland everywhere. Oh, perfect, Cheryl. So it was right around $15. So I am taking two different color deco mesh. I'm doing the wide foil green metallic and pairing that up with a red, white, and green border mesh. And we're going to alternate. Right now I have cut 12 pieces. So, and they're 15 inches long with a wood burning tool. So we're just going to do the ruffle method, which is just pull your deco mesh towards you. Okay, so we have like a cute little bow tie or a uh, ruffle or scrunch, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna start right here at the very, very top. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck a piece right here into the top. And then we're just gonna simply alternate those colors all the way down until we run out. So same thing with the border mesh. It's a little different. You just gotta kind of put an imaginary middle line right up the center and just gather and pull. Okay. And I'm gonna alternate one side versus the other. So this one's going to my side of the deco mesh. And then we'll do green. And all this is doing is establishing a base stability. I'm trying to pull those pieces apart so I can get my piece in just like this. So our focus is building out here, building out here. So that we have some volume to the swag. But this is how you can use an evergreen garland to help you, um, like if you don't have a wreath form, but you know you wanna make a swag or a centerpiece, this is how you do it. to get my end over here. I'm gonna go down in here with our green. Now I've done the teardrop swags before. 
So this is nothing new for me, but it may be for you. So I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, with the end, just making sure. Um, I want to make sure we have enough pieces to go all the way down backwards and forwards. Okay, we'll grab our green. Okay, we're going to go down here and then we're going to loop around. And like I said, this is an estimation. I was just like, well, when we've done our center pieces before, you know, we only use like 12 or 14 pieces. Let's just start with the 12 and see what we think. So if we need to cut more, we will. And then I'm gonna go right underneath here with a piece of green. Don't know why that fell out. Right in, trying to find a piece of evergreen that we can attach that to. I have a feeling we're going to need like two pieces. So let me go ahead and plug in the wood burner. So then you guys can get a demo on the wood burning tool as well. So I'm thinking this one's going to be maybe 14 pieces. I don't know. We'll see. So let's go ahead. And then we'll do our green, green, red, yeah, I'm thinking like exactly two more pieces, so this will be 14 instead of 12, like I had calculated. Just because I want to take my time and really make sure that we have a really full base here. I don't want to go a little too thin. There we go. We'll place our red right in here. And then we'll cut our green and red towards the top. And yes, it doesn't look like it's an evergreen anymore. And that was my intent. I'm just using the evergreen garland as a swag. We got some sticky pieces that want to stick to each other. Okay, so green and red, and that'll finish it. So let me show you how we're going to cut our deco mesh with the wood burning tool. Two totally different pieces. So one is border and the other is white foil. These are cut to 15 inch pieces. So I want to make sure that I protect my cutting up for the 15 inch and we are just going to stretch this out there we go I don't know why the cord just wants to lay all over the place so we want to make sure that our edges line up both the top and the bottom 
Now my wood burning tool is set for 425. And then you'll notice that your deco mesh is made up of lines and columns. What you want to do is pick a column that lines up with your 15 inch mark and stay in that column no matter what it chooses to do. So I'm just staying right in my column all the way through. And that is how quickly you can wood burn. Faster than taking scissors and rolling the scissors up or using the, what is it, the like heat press. Not a fan of that one either. It just takes up too much space. And being a wreath maker, we have so much stuff. Space is a premium. So I'm doing the same thing here. We are going to find our 15. And I'm simply going to line this up. And you'll see that it wiggles in and wiggles out. But that's because when you're laying your deco mesh out, sure this doesn't burn um we're not pulling like it's really hard to get your columns to line up perfectly so what we do is just stay true to our column and then as long as you're on that 15 inch piece you have a straight cut regardless of what it looks like so now we're going to unplug the wood burner I want to make sure I'm unplugging the wood burner, not the glue gun. And then we'll bring our swag back over. And we're going to go ahead and finish with our green and then our border mesh in red. Okay, so this is going to come right in here. And I am pushing it way to the frame. So all the way down to the frame. And then we're going to add our last piece right in here. And then you'll see that we have a very full base in which to work off of. So this is going to fit nice and snug right in here couple twists and we are all good to go. So right now it ends uh, about 31 inches, but it's nice because when you go to ship this, you put this in a uh, 24 inch box on the diagonal. And as you can see, here's 24. My cutting mat is 24 inches tall, 36 inches wide. So if we're looking at 24 inches here, You'll see that fits perfectly on a diagonal. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we want to add our nutcracker to this mess. It's like perfect chaos. And I like to make it to where, let's just say they wanna take it all apart, um, but they wanna keep the nutcracker. So I try to always, when I'm adding stuff like this, make it to where it's still usable but that it's also secured down here into, um, into our swag. And we wanna make sure, I want it just a little bit higher at the top because we're gonna add our bow to the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and put him up in here. And I'm going to take 22 gauge floral wire Gonna undo a big chunk of this. Cut this off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go right here, right underneath the base of his hat. So let me go ahead and get that. So I wanna make sure that I have enough and then it's even in the back. Just two good twists, okay. I'm trying to make sure that it stays underneath the fur of his hat. So I'm fluffing his hat right there so that we can't see, hey, that's where she attached him. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same here at the bottom, just under his waist. 
and that should give him some support to stay in our swag. So same thing here. You can even do the waist if you want. He would just end up doing something up in here. And then as you can tell, we can't see anything. But I think I am going to, I really like the waist part. I think I'm gonna do the waist. Because so you don't really have to f mess with, um, and I'm like, well, if I do that there, then you can't play with the nutcracker piece and make him open and close. So I think we're going to go to his legs. And I keep that pretty tight. You can even go around one leg. So let me go ahead and get this nice and tight here and then I'm going to loop and go through the other side and I'm just going to loop this in the back And then this is where he'll fit. So we can just kind of push that way up at the top. And then he is situated to where we can't really tell how he was attached. So I'm going to go right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and attach his lower half first. I'm just moving all my evergreen pieces out of the way. I got to move the deco mesh pieces out of the way. There we go. Let's get him centered where he needs to be. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over so you can see what I'm doing. And let's see. There's our other piece right here. So we're just going to twist those nice and tight right here. Flip him back over. The lower half is down. Now we've got to get his upper part set. Same thing, we're going to go down through our mesh. There we go. Almost had it. There we go. Got that one. I think the word that you need, tip, not word, tip. Make sure you give yourself plenty of uh, wire. You know, give yourself ample um, wire to go ahead and put this in. Like, don't just try to get the bare minimum in there. Like, really give yourself some. I just, I made my cuts a little too short. So it's just a struggle to pull them and get them nice and secured. Just like that. And so this is what he looks like right now. Okay. So we're going to go in and we're going to add some ribbons to the outside. And I'm praying that these are the right length. I just utilize the same dimensions like if we were doing this on a 14 inch wreath frame with our deco mesh. So these are the colors. We're doing this drum pattern. It's kind of like a Harlequin uh, red and gold with the red and green dots in glitter. And this is from Gordon's. I had this from probably five years ago. 
Um, I had a friend who, when Gordon's back in Louisiana was open, and I've heard that they have since reopened. That's where I got this ribbon, so it's pretty old. And then this is the Sam's Club inch and a half with the Nutcracker from last year. So I don't know if that's still out. In 14 inch for the two and a half, 19 inches for the inch and a half. And then I'm also doing a two and a half inch Nutcracker on white. And then we're picking this up with a D. Stevens um, velvet and gold one inch ribbon. This I got from Shinoda. The bottom ribbon is from Craft Outlet. Again, Sam's and Gordon's. So we're going to try this. We're going to put our nutcracker on where we have the border mesh and the drum where we have this. Um, I think that'll work. So we're going to start here folding it in half so that we know right where the middle point is. And we're just going to put those right inside where our mesh pieces are. And I'm just going to fan that edge down. This ribbon is two-sided. It's gold on one side, green velvet on the other, a really deep dark velvet. So I've already dovetailed the edge. So I'm going to come up about two inches and this is super, super thick ribbon. So it's going to be a little tough. We're going to do our two inches there. Trying to give me some more space so I can secure this piece in. Twist that in. Here is our loop. We're going to right side one piece. And then we're just going to pull this piece down like that. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and do our red I call this a drum print because it just kind of reminds me of what's on his drum. We're going to pull that in. We have it. This piece here. And then because this is a vertical print, unless you cut the ribbon, there's really no way to make your nutcracker guys be upright both ways through open your loop and then we're going to right side these pieces just like so so there's that side and then i'm just looking at hey what what color ribbon do i have I'm back to this border. So we're doing our nutcracker. Right in here. And then our green. About two inches from the top, I'm going to kind of pinch in. And we'll flip that around. And this ribbon will hold whatever shape we gave it. It is that great of a quality. And then we're back with our drum. reconfigure my evergreen so I had a good piece that we could work off of. I kind of like the I like the expensive ribbon. That D. Stevens ribbon is very expensive. So I want that quality to be front and center. Another quick twist. Make sure we can see everything. And then we're back to our red. So I'm just going around and just alternating my ribbon 
based on what color deco mesh I'm laying that ribbon on top of. And if your deco mesh is a little wild, just tame it by folding your edges underneath. Gather that in. Open. I know it looks a little weird right now, but it he'll fill out once we go ahead and get our ribbon in here. Because what you're seeing is the ribbon is elongating and filling in this space here so back to um let's see i have green I'm push this one around so i can actually access my green piece there we go i had the red sitting on top of the green And here's our nutcracker. Um, let's see. Tuning in late, but we'll catch the replay. Thank you, um, Heidi, for capturing that. But yes, um, it's not just on YouTube. It's also on my um, Facebook page. It'll just go to replay at that point. And I pin it to the top. So people that are looking for the most recent videos, we'll find those at the top of the Cats Creations public page on Facebook. Okay. Round in the bin. And it's so funny because I'm looking at him going, he's like way over here. We will get him all situated so he looks... Like he's in the space that we've designated for him. Green. I promise he'll go in the center. Flipping this round. And now we're going to work the other side. So we're here in our green. Here he goes. He's filling out. Or he will by the time we start getting on this side. Now we are back to our red. Oh, it's just going to go right in here. And our green velvet. Pulling out, trying to find the other half of my evergreen piece. Oh, it went underneath. It went under him.
sitting in there better. down here. And go ahead and there we go. I want to make sure we have our our green in here. The green is tucking around to the bottom. Small space. Okay. And then we'll need to uh, So we have our red and then we have our green. And I think, let me look at him and make sure he's situated. He looks even. Make sure his head and his feet. There we go. So let me show you what it looks like, kind of partially like so. So I think what I'm gonna do is at the very bottom, we're gonna put a bow. So I'm going to move this last set of ribbons because that's where our bow home will be. And I move this over to the side and then I'm going to cut that final piece. And then we'll put our bow here because it's going to be predominantly at the very bottom so that it'll extend our door swag even farther down. Okay. There we go. Let's make sure we've got all our little curls on all of our ribbon. We can still see all of our deco mesh. It's all still visible. He's centered in the center. And then we're going to put a nice bow down here for him. So I'm just going to move him off to the side. And let's go ahead and start our bow. So let me, I want to just double check the loops length. So I'm going to measure out 11 inches right here. And I want to make sure that my ribbon loops. Oh yeah. Perfect. I just didn't want to make sure it extended way past where his, um, now that I think about that, hold on. We're good. I was like, well, there's half and half, cat. You gotta like half on one side and half on the other. Okay, so we're making our bow. Standard bow for me, this is the recipe for this exact bow, is on my website for free. So we're gonna dovetail the edges, which just mean bring your wired edges together. You're gonna cut from the folded side down to the wired point. Again, he's vertical. There's not much you can do unless you cut and then splice your ribbon together. I don't like doing that. 
Um, we are going 10 inch tails. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that in and I'm gonna twist and I'm gonna grab my Bodabra. We're gonna place that inside and we're doing five and a half inch loops. So I guess roughly what that should look like. And then I line my Bodabra up on that 10 inch line. And as I stretch it out, I need to make sure that it ends at five and a half inches. So then we don't have an overly big bow. Turn it around, do the other side. Line it up, stretch it out and measure. And then we're going back out for a 10 inch tail. And we're gonna dovetail that end. So there's one. And then we're gonna put our other two and a half inch in. And we're doing this nine and a half inch tail length. Okay, so dovetail first. And we're measuring out nine and a half inches. We gather, you twist, and then you measure your loop length. So we're doing five inch loops now. So it should come off of your loop by half inch, but double check, stretch it out. Where does that end? Bring it back in. So you're right at five inches. Same on the other side. Right there. And then back out nine and a half inches. And we'll go ahead and dovetail that one. Hi, Blanche. Hi, Betsy. Right, Cheryl? You can't tell us the teardrop. Well, we were hiding the teardrop when we had it anyway. Hi, Jean. You just saw the notice. Gotta love that, man. Sometimes Facebook doesn't even, like, I've been noticing my phone doesn't even update um, until, like, sometimes it's 24 hours later. Um, so these are the ribbons that we had that we used in the design, but I'm going to also incorporate a black and white harlequin and your traditional, like, Christmas ribbon. So I think what I want to do is I want to break them up like this. Eh, no, can't do that. Cause I'm looking at what we'd be laying that on top of, and then it would be red and green on top of that. So let's flip these around. <sighs> let's do them like this. Yeah. Let's do them like that. Okay. And I think we'll do the D Stevens on top. So uh, we're going to have to do Harlequin now. So this Harlequin print is from Craft Outlet. It's inch and a half. And then I think this was a leftover from like uh, Costco eons ago. So this is going to be nine inches with a four and a half inch loop. Just because our Nutcracker has that black hat and the black boots, I thought, you know what? Let's just play and pull that Harlequin in. So four and a half inches. We're gonna go four and a half again. I'm always making sure that I line everything up correctly. And this ends at nine. Dovetail the end. Oops, there we go. And then we are going to do that Christmas ribbon from Costco. Oops, I'm going to have to go dig that pin out since the top just came out. So, inch and a half. 
dovetail the end. We are doing eight and a half inches for this one. So eight and a half. Twist. And we're also doing four and a half inches. So here's a cheat. Because we know the bottom one's already there, just put your finger in both loops and pull. And we're going to do the same on the other side. Um, let's make sure. Sometimes I have to be careful not to pull the wrong ribbon when I'm trying to measure my loops. This one it wants to pull from the one on the opposite side so I need to make sure it does not do that otherwise our loops will not be the same okay now we're gonna do our nutcracker let's dovetail this end first So nutcracker, and then we'll finish with the D. Stevens ribbon. Although I really want this. Let's put this there. Even though it's an inch, we're going to still stick it in there. So this is super thick. You'll hear it when I go to dovetail this. Just to get through those wires. It's got to be like 18 gauge wire in there. So we're doing 8 inches. That's going to be super hard to twist that, but it's going to hold up those loops beautifully. And we're doing a four inch loop. So we're going to do it again on the other side. Four inches and then back out to eight. Dovetail the end. Okay, that one's in. And now we'll do the nutcracker. Which will be seven and a half inches for our tail length. And then three and a half inches for our loop length. So super small loop. For me, that's about as small as I generally will go. Maybe three, but nothing smaller than that. Unless we're making like the little hand tied bows. And then right at his waist. There we go. Okay, let's dovetail his end. And then grab a pipe cleaner. Let's get probably, let's do red. And this is going to be a downward facing bow. So we can fluff it the same, but it's a little bit different. So I'm still picking that up, compressing everything down. Place your pipe cleaner through. You could use floral wire, you could use a zip tie, you could use whatever you want. I just like pipe cleaners because my hand strength has um, gotten weaker as I've gotten older. So I'm going to go ahead and secure this onto my fluff board. Put these in. And then spin this around. Which all it is is a 24 by 24 by one inch thick piece of finished plywood. And then I've added an inch and a half to two inch C hook. Just screw it right to the center so that I can loop that on there and then we're secure. It's not going to slide off the, the bow. Now, when we're doing a down bow, like a bow that's at the very bottom, we want the tails to all be at the bottom. So I'm going to pull all the tails down first. 
I'm gonna go find them all. There's this one, and then that one. Same thing. Pull all your loop or your tails down, and then we're just gonna fluff what's left on top. So we're gonna start at the top, and we're gonna lift the top two, but opposites. So just like that. That's how that's going to be. And then from here, same thing. We're gonna go opposite, kind of like that in between. And then here, opposite fluff. Okay. And then same thing here. We're gonna pull this one up and open those up and opposite here. Just like so, and just like that, and pull all your tails down. At this point, you can start fluffing them by just running your tails between your fingers, and that'll kind of curl them in the way that they went when they were on the ribbon roll. Well, it's a little weird right now. It looks much better when you put it on because then you can really pick and choose what you want where. But you have the essence of the down bow. So this is a bow that faces downward. So I'm just going to remove this in the opposite direction. I put it on. And now we're going to add that to our little nutcracker swag. And we're focusing that bow on the very bottom. So our bow is going to go right here, tucked right underneath him, which is why I pulled the ribbons out of the bottom ones. So I'm just going to take this. I'm going to pull my loops for these forward. I'm trying to get them right underneath I'm trying to make a way for my pipe cleaner to go down down I'm just trying to make the ends meet and I've secured that okay and now we're going to come down here and fluff this Because now we can, now we know where its little home is. So now we can go ahead and just get everything situated in the right spots. We can have our tails all splayed out downward from here. And make sure that he is even so that this is kind of what we have. With all of our loops, just like so. So I know it's kind of hard to see the whole thing until we get him up on the door, but I want to add just a couple cute little embellishments here. So that's the reason for the glue gun being on. So I have these super adorable little curly cues that Hobby Lobby has. So I am going to incorporate them into this design. So I'm just going to pull those down one at a time and snip them off just like this I think we'll need about six so I've got three four five and the last one six and we can stretch these out 
just doing this. And then I'm going to glue the ends and we're gonna like tuck some little pieces in here and there so that he'll have some little curly Q wisps up in here. So glue both sides of your curly Q, the little ends. And I'm gonna tuck this one in right under here with a little arc in it. I'm gonna take this one and kind of tuck that in here so that it goes this way. There's that one. Go up to the other side. We're gonna simply just extend his little curly cue and we'll have this one kind of coming off the side here. So there's that one. I want to make sure that's all tucked in. And then we're going to add this curly cue off to the side. Again, if you need them stretched because you need a little bit more length, then just pull the curly cue. I love how nice and simple those are to use. I think I'm going to add two up here at the top. Just one on each side. So right in there, this one's a little too small, so I'm going to extend, try to find one that's about the same length, because you've got quite a few of them on there. So I'm going to tag this one in here, just because I love adding a little touch of gold into that design. I pulled on that because I was like, did I put that in there? No. Yes, I did, but it was glued in. And then of course I go and pull it out. So there's those. Okay. And then I'm going to add a couple at the bottom. There's that one. Let's grab this one. This one I don't like because most of its glitter is off. So let's go in here and grab this one. This one's just got too much glitter missing. So I'm gonna tuck these ones into the bottom of our bow. Just like that. That one is not going in. And we'll curl these in. So we have that one there. I want a small one. These ones are too big. So we're going to tuck this one in right inside here. that curly Q. And I was looking for, I'm like, what happened to the other nutcracker? It was hiding on the other side. So I'm like, why am I not seeing both ribbons there? Okay, 
So let me show you what this looks like on the door so that you can actually see him in his entirety. Like I said, finished product right now is still roughly 31 inches. Width is 16 inches and he is most definitely five and a half to six inches full. So I'm gonna go ahead and pivot you up. Hi all. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove this one off the door. And we're gonna go ahead and put our swag on the door. So what I'm doing is twisting a couple of the evergreen ties together so that I actually have a hanger. And so this is how he sits on your door. Let me make sure all of our glue from the curly cubes is out, just like this, that we can see all of our bow, all of our pieces. Oops, and this one still did not want to stick. We will make it stick now. And there is our Nutcracker Sprague. I'm trying to duck down and get out of the way, so <clears throat> give me just one second. It's going to go shoot, like right into the center. So give me a second. It'll go boom. Um, Carol, I don't have the I notify. So if you just make sure that you've liked and followed the page, you should be all set. Make sure it's a little bit bigger. There we go. I think that's there. I wish that we could get it to go on a vertical. It only goes horizontal for the zoom. But um, that is our Nutcracker swag using, because people always be like, what'd you use for the base? What'd you use for the frame? Just evergreen garland. Twisted it together. Made it really super thick. But yeah, he looks really amazing on a front door. So I try to do one every year for Christmas. So this is the 2023 version. So if you like him, he is available on the website that is pinned to the bottom below. <clears throat> so he's all ready to ship. Any other questions you guys have that I can answer for you? Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Pam. And that's how to make a nutcracker swag when you don't have the swag or they're sold out of the swag, right? Hey, we can always go to the Hobby Lobby and find the garland and then we're good. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me and I will 